intruder! I wasn't behind the bush. I was in the closet. What? How did you even get in here? Press pass. I, I, I don't think that's how that works. Well, you should tell your guards that. Oh, believe me, I will. You feel that? I think he's starting another review. You know what that means? More belly aching about us being the Gilligan of the show and reviewing it isn't the main thing about you? Bingo. So, this episode starts outside a flower stall. Looks like I'm not the only one who left Mayor's Day to the last minute. Good gravy! How many holidays are there? Why am I still surprised by this? Well, I'm certain that if you counted every Earth holiday, you'd have something going on almost every week. But I think the more important question is, what the heck is Mayor's Day and what does it entail? I'm pretty sure they should have just gone with Mother's Day. Judging from the name, I'm guessing it'd be the equivalent of... Women's Day. Is that a thing that exists? I've never heard of it. Well, in South Africa, yeah. Well then, in that case, uh, thanks to the show staff for being inclusive of obscure holidays, I guess. But then we go to the townsfolk as they meet their hourly mass panic quota. What I would do? What I would do is ask why you're all worried about it anyway when two-thirds of you in this crowd should be at home celebrating, I think... Seriously, what on God's green earth is Mayor's Day? Why are you so hung up on this? You got something against mayors? You sexist bra? Mayors don't deserve to be celebrated? All mayors are queens, and it's misogynists like you that keep them down! Did I get my Tumblr brownie points yet? Yeah, I've got enough questions bogging down my problem-solving skills with whatever is going on here at the moment. I don't need you adding more questions to that. Although the first of which would be, why the heck do you care about Tumblr brownie points in the first place? Because if he was any more of a white knight, he'd be shining armor. Hey! I thought you were the one who was supposed to do the burning. Anyways, Rarity suggests selling the flowers based on main color. Which might be a bad idea. Different flowers carry different meanings, and not all of them positive. The orange lily implies extreme hatred. The begonia and lavender are respectively danger and suspicion. How do you know that? The hard way. That's it! I have more questions now. How is it that the professional bouquet artists overlooked the idea of incorporating color theory? You would think that would be a given. Well, these are those three ponies, and they have been previously shown to be very, very dumb. Good point. Oh, darling, I need a dozen lavender pieces for photo finishes shoot on the most beautiful manes in Equestria. Rarity, I literally just said that lavender signifies suspicion! What are you doing?! I would make a really easy and mean joke here, but we should let it go. The fashion and design expert, and clearly the one who we're giving all the power to in this situation, says it's okay, so it doesn't matter. We're taking the old-fashioned route. Flowers are good as long as they color coordinate, which I think is much simpler and nicer if you ask me. So Rarity goes around helping random ponies and basically being generous. I like that this feels really natural and doesn't need a song number shoved down their throats telling us she's generous, guys, remember? But this series of scenes has a different connotation to me. I wasn't seeing this as a highlight of her generosity nearly as much as I was seeing a demonstration of her skills and design in business sense while drawing copious amounts of attention to her main. Por que no las dos? <laughs> <laughs> Could you make one in a pale yellow? I need something across the color wheel from this. <laughs> I don't think a yellow couch would work too well. Yes, it's across the color wheel, but a compliment would work much better. Well, compliments actually work very well as a tertiary. Rary's gala dress had a yellow trim and it looked fine. It doesn't have to be directly across the color wheel. Depends on the yellow and what she's wearing. Fair enough, but couches for only three bits? That... I can't justify. No wonder his business sucks. Well, then again, that's accurate to furniture stores in real life. So we move on to Pinky giving the Cake Twins a Sneeze-aversary party. You know, it's probably Pinky's fault that there's a holiday every single week in Ponyville. She probably invented Mare's Day 2. That or she just wanted an excuse to spray silly string everywhere. Now you might think those would be the same thing, but according to the episode, they're not. So they decide to go to Zakora to get a fix. That's good, because it would take forever to yank all those baked goods out of this super sticky celebration string. 
Pinky just wasted perfectly good, sellable food. Why does she still work here? Maybe she just makes more sales than what she destroys. And come to think of it, a lot of customers like friendly, upbeat attitudes. One shouldn't have to brave the darkest part of the forest for shampoo. Do you think Photo Finish would want to take a picture of my mane? Yeah, I want to make a documentary on your mane and try to figure out how the heck you store all that stuff in there. Does that count as taking a picture of it? Listen, spooky eyes! Why don't you take a picture? It will last longer! Good idea! Blackmail material like this is why I never go anywhere without my camera. Anyways, they go to Sakura who fixes up each of them what they need, shampoo and cleaner. But a spooky story knocks the vials off the table and we know exactly where this is going. You'd think that knocking them both off would make them double check or something. After all, evil overlord list rule 83. If I'm eating dinner with the hero, put poison in his goblet, and then have to leave the table for any reason, I will order new drinks for the both of us instead of trying to decide whether or not to switch with them. Why are you studying something like that? Reasons? Anywho, Rarity takes her vial into the shower and washes her mane. My mane feels lighter already. That is my new text alert. I will never again answer the phone without a smile. So she goes to Zakora and it's explained that this was due to the vial mix-up. Oh, thank goodness! I thought maybe your shampoo had triggered early on that mare pattern baldness. No, male pattern baldness. First mare's day. Now this. You don't need to replace everything with Mare. Welcome to My Little Pony, Brawny Buck. Are you aware of the existence of Derpy? <sighs> I know. There's just a limit to where it just doesn't make sense anymore, though. A point where we should have stopped, and we have clearly passed it. Yes, but let's keep going and see what happens. You should go finish your list of to-dos. Keep your mind off of all of these main losing blues. Well, that's easy for you to say, Zakora. You still have your mane. The air is thick with salt and insecurity. Shut up and keep playing the episode. Uh, sorry, I uh, believe it was my turn and, and I, 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 I just need to pick up some- Hey Rarity, remember that time you got on Fluttershy's case for doing the exact same thing? Do as I say, not as I do, makes a class A hypocrite out of you. The kindness has nothing to do with it. Rarity always knows how to make something look its best. Probably because she looks so good herself. That ain't something us non-fabulous folk here can understand. Uh, non-fabulous? How does nobody recognize her? I've found through personal experience that the Clark Kent disguise actually works a lot better than people usually give it credit for. And let's not forget that this is the same town that got fooled by Fluttershy when she covered half of her head with a sun hat and her eyes in sunglasses, still leaving her tail, coat color, and cutie mark visible. Oh, so the writers are actually paying attention to continuity. Who wrote this? Huh. That explains it. Oh, thank you, Davenport. Um, perhaps I can pick it up once every pony... What? I can't believe how differently ponies treat you when you can't command their attention. Heh, <laughs> no joke. Just a great line. Oh, I'm sorry, what? I wasn't paying attention. Messed up. Does this look messed up to you? <gasps> my eyes! Can't you do a spell to restore some semblance of my mane? The thing is, it's pretty much like Zakora said. Fixing mains with magic is- COMPLETELY FEASIBLE! Roll with me, Firebrand. Levitation. Teleportation. Transfiguration. Creating new limbs. Gem finding. Force fields. Magic missiles. Hologram projection. Brainwashing. Time travel. Planes walking. Creating, creating freaking, freaking life. life. And even ignoring all of them. There's still number 25 from Ghostbusters. The fifth episode of the show. Just hit it on the scalp, repeat as necessary, dye it purple, and call it a day. If a reptile can grow hair, there are absolutely no excuses here. This won't do! I need an actual mane! But it has to come from somewhere. Wait a minute, every time they zapped something into existence was just replacing it? Okay, while I do respect the attempt to follow the first law of thermodynamics, it's a show about magical cartoon horses. We can suspend our disbelief. Oh, that's never been a good excuse, even barring the possible contradiction to continuity here. But then Zakora comes in, saying that the hair will grow back on its own. There's no magical cure to hasten us through it, unless you went backward in time to undo it. Uh-uh. I think we can both say that's not a good option. Gosh darn it. Alrighty then, Firebrand. There's only one thing left to do. I need you to give me $10,000. Why? That's about the standard going rate for a root transplant. 
Ask me how I know that. But before we do that, let's go ask Applejack, Rainbow Dash, and Fluttershy if the right outfit can make up for a lack of mane. Spoiler alert that I could have already told everyone, it can't. So let's try some homegrown rustic remedies. Right after I figure out why we are milking the supposedly sentient cows. Oh god, the implications. A wig, yeah, that seems like a sensible solution. If you're okay with the idea of living a lie. A temporary solution. That's a good point. Oh, let's face it, I'll just have to call photo finish and cancel. With what? You don't have phones! Yoo-hoo! Photo finish! What is that? I think Rarity said you need to ransom the boot. So then Rarity's friends go to check up on her, and they found that she's downed over a dozen tubs of ice cream. That metabolism makes me jealous. Well, if she went for something similar to Hagen dazs strawberry cheesecake ice cream, she'd be eating about 1,175 calories per tub, and it looks like there are at least 14 finished ones. She just downed over 16,000 calories in the span of a few hours. And to give everybody a frame of reference, I personally eat about 8,000 calories in a week. Rarity must have a black hole stomach that's made of steel. Think of the stomachache! Well, given that she likely grew up with this food, maybe she does have a high tolerance. That or she perched off screen. So after a pep talk from the rest of her friend, Rarity comes to the realization that the only reason she was being treated differently is because she was acting differently. She then proceeds to go behind the screen and come back out with a punk rock look that the fandom is still obsessing over. Which would be fine if that all didn't instantly negate the entire message of the episode. Is this a rant? Two paragraphs, that's all you get. Alrighty then, mini moral of the story time. Rarity's character, from what I have seen, has always been about bringing out someone's natural beauty and generously contributing wherever she can. Here, while speaking about accepting yourself as you still are, she still completely changes what she had, even going as far as to use the hair dye and extensions that she had earlier dismissed. At least, that's what I would assume given how she comes out from the screen with more hair than she had going in. Either way, not only is she contradicting herself, but she is also completely undercutting the very real fact that people can and often do treat you differently based on how you look, regardless of if they should or shouldn't. Furthermore, Rarity didn't regain her confidence until her friends reminded her of her abilities and her past accomplishments, which would make the lesson about the importance of confidence in yourself above your looks, or the importance of creativity and making the best out of a bad situation, and the importance of relying on your friends for emotional support through times of self-doubt. Well, I'm gonna have to disagree. The message was that the only thing that really changed was her attitude. Rarity stopped acting like the fabulous fashionista she was. As you said, Rarity isn't about putting on a mask or covering up the real self. She's about accentuating what's already there. With the previous attempts, all she ever did was try to reverse it, cover it up, or distract from it. She kept trying to hide her imperfection instead of accepting it and accentuating the best like she has before. And in doing so, she gave people a new perspective on it just like she always has. And in doing that, we see again what has made people love Rarity so much. It certainly is difficult to recover from losing something that you've based your identity around, and wanting to cover that up is natural. That's the whole reason I wear a blazer. But the lesson was worded to be about feeling good regardless of how you look, which only sometimes works in real life and never works in commercially artistic industries like rarities. If nothing else, it just muddies the applicability of whatever lesson they were going for by having contradictory points between what is being shown and what is being told. Yeah, maybe it could have been worded better, but in the end, I feel this episode is a good celebration of the best parts of Rarity, and was way more subtle about it than Made in Manhattan. Cutting back to the flower stand. It's my own fault. I shouldn't have bought flowers without asking spoiled what she likes. But how do you not? How long have you been married? I have a solution. Rarity, that mane is amazing. Don't you mean... Amazing? I have quite a few lavender arrangements to spare. Uh, is lavender purple? If fem fiction has taught us anything, it's that you can identify lavender by looking at Twilight Sparkle. <laughs> what did I do? Oh, sorry. I got reminded of the existence of the lavender unicorn syndrome trope, and it gave me a bad case of seeing red unicorn syndrome. I don't know why you were so upset. Your mane looks awesome! 
Uh, don't want to rain on your parade, but remember the last time you took fashion advice from Rainbow Dash? That's not advice so much as a compliment. I know, I was just being pedantic. I can look good on the outside as long as I feel good on the inside. That might be the case sometimes, but other times it might also be indicative of a serious health problem that you should probably not let go unchecked. Or that you don't take care of yourself, which will then lead to serious health problems that you shouldn't go left unchecked. Do you think we might be deliberately misinterpreting the statement simply to make a petty joke? I will acknowledge the possibility. Pinky must have a... <laughs> Shampoo. Oh god. All those ruined confectionaries. It's a darn shame, really. But then we cut to a few months later, and Rarity's Bane is back to normal, and it appears that she has still made the cover of the magazine. We had a little talk with Photo Finish and explain just how beautiful we thought you were, inside and out. Yeah, taking photos of someone to plaster in a magazine without consent, that's legal. Hey, photography is not a crime. Plus, it could be reason that she signed consent forms prior to the initial shoot and photo finish worked from those. Besides, a good nature photographer is never seen. What kind of nature? Oh, you know, birds, trees, calls. So we end on the shot of Rarity reviving the Mohawk, and that was It Isn't the Main Thing About You. I like this episode. While a few continuity errors had to happen, and a few simple solutions had to be ignored in order for this episode to be feasible, I really enjoyed it. We got to see a good reminder as to why Rarity is such a great character. There were plenty of funny moments, and it had a good, if cliched message. Despite feeling personally attacked, I enjoyed the episode for the comedy that it had. However, I disagree with the implications that the message could have. Having confidence despite your looks is important, but I've personally seen people take that sentiment too far and end up not taking care of themselves or trying to ever improve as a person. I think the lesson would have been much better if it was explicitly about having confidence in your actions and abilities above your looks, thus emphasizing the importance of being able to quickly problem solve and make the best out of a bad situation with the support of your friends. But between the way the lesson was worded, executed, and what I believe it should have been, this episode gave me a lot to think about, which is what I love most about not only Rarity's character, but the series as a whole. So, you get enough pictures? Nope, I've gotta get just a few more. Just pretend I'm not here. <sighs> Fine. You done yet? Nope. You done yet? No. You done yet? No. You done yet? No, gosh darn it, and the more you ask me, the longer it takes! You done yet? Yes! I told you photography is not a crime!